me and be asking, is, this is an incredible true story and one that I'm sort of ashamed to say I'd never heard of. So I Don't worry, we haven't. Can, uh, I was going to say, can you put me at ease and tell me that you hadn't heard it either? Oh, yeah, I hadn't. I didn't know this story. I mean, I knew who, who Allen Ginsberg was and, and obviously the beats and, and things, but I knew nothing about this story, absolutely. Likewise. I mean, you're paying, uh, portraying two really renowned kind of historical figures. How, do you, do you um, kind of approach a role like that any differently to a, a, fi a fictitious creation? Well, I think the only uh, the only difference is that you know normally your entire basis for a character, if it's a fictional character, uh, is the script. You know, and and with this, it's great because you do have, there's a whole lot of research material that's uh, you know already been done for you and it's already out there and you can read it and Allen Ginsberg's diaries were the sort of the main thing but there obviously is still imagination involved. Uh, yeah I mean the difference I guess is that uh, a lot of the work is already done for you you just have to read it. And I was wondering as well I mean uh, what, does it really help to, to play these characters kind of before they became, became so renowned so it gives you a bit more creative license I suppose. It definitely took the pressure off me in terms of a couple of like you know uh, I don't. I'm not going to be sounding like Alan because most the voice of Alan Ginsberg, most people recognise, is the voice of him, sort of as a 40, 50 year old man doing poetry readings, and you know. So there was definitely some license in the fact that you know this is before he'd smoked a ton of cigarettes and done loads of drugs, so he wouldn't have quite that same rasp. Um, and I think other than that, it just like John said to us, you know, just focus on the time period that you're playing them in, because uh, it's sort of it's uh, not constructive to look any further than that. So that was what we focused on. I was wondering as well, because I interviewed uh, John recently, the director, of course, he was absolutely lovely, even if he did have tonsillitis. Oh, and, of course. Uh, yeah. he, he was saying that uh, he created a really strong bond with all of the, of, of the actors on set. And I think he said he spent one day sort of sharing secrets with, the, with you, Daniel. And I was wondering how Many. important and sort of beneficial it was to the shoot to have this kind of relationship with uh, the man in, in the director's chair. Yeah, I mean, it was great, you know. Um, the way John works, I think, was fantastic. And every director works in a different way, but to be able to go through it with somebody that you feel is a friend as well is a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. I mean, John, John is a, he's a fantastic director of actors, and, and, and he loves actors as well. Like, a lot of directors, I secretly think, don't really like actors very much. <laughs> and, and John, like, loves them and loves working with them and finding how everybody works in their different ways and he's uh, he's he's great and he was uh, he, he was fantastic to have on set and now in a, in a bid to make you both as, as awkward as possible i read daniel that you said that dane is the best friend you've made through uh, acting and i was wondering uh, what it was between you two that just clicked i don't know i mean i think we're just uh we're just quite uh, like-minded i think we have a very similar view of our lives and our jobs and i think when you meet somebody that you get on with personally and also work, work very well with professionally, you know, you, you hang on to those people because you, you don't get that on every job. I imagine that must have sort of enhanced the, the kind of relationship on screen so much as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And it just makes it fun, it just makes it a really like, when you're doing a shoot this fast and this, you know, depending on the people you have around, it'll either be incredibly exhilarating or incredibly stressful. And because of the group we had on this, it was incredibly exhilarating. And, uh, and Daniel, I was wondering, of course, you know, when you take, when you pick roles, I mean, because there's a few daring scenes in this movie, uh, and you've sort of deliberately, sort of, I've seen, sort of done that since since Potter sort of finished. And I was wondering, do you sort of feel a pressure to to appease the Potter sort of fans at all? Do you have to bear them? Well, clearly not. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <coughs> no. I mean, I don't make decisions based on what other people might think of my decisions. Um, because I think I have to, you know, I have to do what I want for me and what makes me happy and uh, in my work. Um, but I also think that the Potter fans are generally, in, they don't need appeasing. You know, they don't, they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to watch me in just the same old, same old stuff forever. You know, they're, they are people who want a challenge and have grown up with me and are ready for this kind of challenging material. So although, you know, there may be a couple of probably uh, mothers more and fathers more than anybody else who go, oh, he shouldn't be doing that because of that. Well, you know, if a couple of people think that, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Dane, I was wondering, because I mean, your career's come an incredible way in the past couple of years. I was wondering, when you first sort of took that, that role in Chronicle, did you ever envisage that sort of a year or so down the line you'd be one of the most sought after sort of young actors in Hollywood? Uh, no, certainly not. Um, never, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, Chronicle, I actually, Chronicle had come out, I think, the week before we started filming this movie, you know. Um, but, yeah, so everything that's happened and all the stuff I've done, I mean, it's been 
beyond a dream come true and you know something I never expected to happen but I'm incredibly grateful it has. So my final question is obviously we've got the amazing Spider-Man 2 uh, next year which we're looking forward to. That must have been quite an experience for you as well. Yeah for sure it was great. Well, thank you so much. For thank you very much. Man. Cheers. Hey, you guys. I just I yeah. want to do it every time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>